Thank you, Marcos. Trust me, not the worst way I've ever been introduced by him at all. Oh, swivels. This is nice. Yes, my name is Robert Luigi Parr. I come all the way from the great state of Wisconsin. Have you guys heard of this magical land? It's beautiful. I love Wisconsin. I'll tell you why. I have never seen uh, this sign posted in any other state where it says that the Make Your Own Bloody Mary bar is not a free salad bar. I don't know what kind of shitty salad you can make from a bloody from a Make Your Own Bloody Mary bar. I, it's like tomato juice, couple peppers, a pickle, and Worcestershire sauce, and that's like all you have. And uh, and not only do they have this sign, but then they had to discontinue the Make Your Own Bloody Mary bar because too many people weren't paying attention to the sign. <coughs> that is just ridiculous. But Wisconsin takes drinking to just a whole new level. It's amazing. I love it. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm up here and I'm not that funny, I don't worry, I do have another job. I do sell cars. Uh, and the similarity between doing comedy and selling cars is I haven't received a paycheck for either one in about five weeks. Which is nice. I'm, I got it. I'm just like, I'm so poor nowadays. It's not that I don't want to, like, do drugs. It's just like I can't afford drugs right now. So I just go out to the bar and leave my beer suspiciously at the bar for like long amounts of time. Like hoping to God that someone's going to throw a couple pills in there and I'll wake up in Singapore in three days. I don't know what the hell happened. Oh, man. I'll be the one-man wolf pack trying to figure shit out. That'd be great. Uh, no, but I really am poor, though. I, I'm actually still poor. I'm actually thinking about selling my body on Craigslist. And don't worry, I have a mirror. I know how I look, and I never thought I could make a lot of money until I came to Rockford. Huh. And holy <laughs> shit, is Rockford a fat town. Like, did, and you guys agree with me, right? Rockford's a fat town? Did you guys not pass the eight all-you-can-eat buffets on your way here? Like, in one square mile? Like, one block radius? Like, it's, rid it's ridiculous. My parents actually took me out to one of them a few weeks ago. Why? Because, why did I agree to go? Because it's a free meal, and I, again, am poor. And uh, my parents took me out to an all-you-can buffet. As we passed by seven of them, I'm like, why don't we go to this one? Why don't we go to that one? We're going to the good one. We're going to the Golden Corral. I didn't know there was a Zagat's Guide to all-you-can-eat buffets, but apparently my parents wrote it. So that's nice. Um, people are actually starting to park at subways and waddle over to the all-you-can-eat buffets, <laughs> which I find kind of funny. Uh, we, we, we pull up to the Golden Corral, the first thing that we see is two teenagers walk out with a cone of cotton candy, one in each hand. My first thought was, when the hell did they start putting cotton candy on an all-you-can-eat buffet? And then my second thought was, when have I ever went to an all-you-can-eat buffet and thought about what I can take home? This is, this is nuts. Thank God my mom bought her big purse, we were able to eat shrimp for a week. Yeah, that was nice. That was perfect, I loved it. Uh, but don't worry, Rockford's not the only town I talk shit about. Uh, like Marcos is saying, uh, we actually uh, did go to Milwaukee uh, about a week ago. And as we're driving, all we had to do is follow 43 South. Sounds simple. No. We come up to, we come up to this injunction, and 43 South goes right, and it also goes left. So what we did was we took neither route and somehow got lost. So I don't know how this happened, but we wound up in not such a good neighborhood of uh, Milwaukee, and we started seeing like, all these different signs. Like The first storefront we see has a huge banner, it reads, we now serve American and Mexican foods. Like, it was the outcome of some weird lawsuit that I can never properly imagine in my own head. And then we, uh, we stop at another stop sign and we see uh, another uh, Mexican venue that it has just Mexican signs like everywhere, all Spanish. The only one that was actually English said, we accept food stamps. <laughs> so I thought that was a little bit funnier. <laughs> and then we stop at the third stop sign and we see the Kegel Hotel. And that's when we stopped making fun of, fun of uh, we stopped making fun of signs. Because I don't know like what the Kegel Hotel is or why someone would name it that. Maybe the room gets smaller like for the like every hour that you're in it. I don't know. Uh, I know it's pretty hard to like take a romantic date and make it sound interesting. Like, hey honey, I know we gotta get away from the kids. I booked us a room together. 
Uh, we're going to be staying at the Kegel, and I get, if I had a wife, I'd probably get divorced for saying stupid shit like that, so. <laughs> no, but I do, do enjoy comedy. It's a great job. Um, I've been doing comedy for about a year now, which is really nice. And what's, I always remember when my parents first said to me, when I told them I was going to be a stand-up comic, uh, I, told, I said, yeah, I'm going to be a stand-up comic. They're like, that's great, but you got to do what you got to do in life, and we're, we'll be with you when you come through on the other side. I said stand-up comic. My parents heard gay porn star. And my parents are so Christian and conservative that I think that they believe that the Fifty Shades of Grey is a story about colorblindness. So that was very interesting. Uh, I read, I actually read a really nice little interesting quote today that, did you guys know that uh, with the supply and demand of Doritos Locos Tacos, Taco Bell has been able to create 15,000 jobs because of it. Like, I'm not even kidding you, that's not, that's not even a punchline. 15,000 jobs because of how successful Doritos Locos Tacos is. And we're trying to fight childhood obesity? Are you kidding me? Hell no, get another fatty as freaking taco and have all the kids do the little uh, shuffle shuffle and, you know, daddy has to work. So, uh, you know, I don't know why we're trying to fight childhood obesity so much. It's nuts. I'll tell you what, I, uh, I had a big misconception in my life for quite a while. I thought, uh, I had a big misconception in my life for quite a while. I thought ADHD was like just becoming way too overly diagnosed. I thought that there was, uh, like, not every kid had attention deficit disorder. And then something happened. I tried to masturbate without using porn. Yeah. Have you ever tried to do that? Just, like, freestyle it? Yeah. I'm over there going, big tits, big tits, big tits. Oh, my God, I forgot to sweep off my front porch. Oh, my God. I don't even have a freaking front porch. Like, what the hell is that about? I have no idea. Now you wonder why I'm single. Yes, I do stuff like this. What's really funny about being single is I need to find a new girl in my life, not because I want an extra income or because I want love and affection. It's because my, I'm so fat, my truck actually leans to one side. I need to have a girl get on the other passenger side so I can bring it up on the level and, and get a better gas mileage in my truck. So that's nice. And it's not really easy for me to find a girl because of the fact that uh, the way I look, only about 20% on a good day of the women in this population actually find me attractive. And then when they find out that I'm an asthmatic, it, it drops to about 20% of the 20%, because not a lot of girls find it very sexy when you reach for your, as your asthma inhaler during foreplay. Yeah. Especially when we start making out. And uh, you got to take that big, deep breath in. It feels like I'm trying to suck the air straight from my lungs. That's awesome. Well, hey, that's my time. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been a great audience.